This lesson, we are going to learn how to model real life situation with linear systems. When two or more equations are put together and used to model a problem, we call this a system of equations. If all the equations are linear, then it is called a linear system. The solution to a linear system is an ordered pair. It is also the point of intersection of all the linear lines. Example one: Does the ordered pair one two satisfy the following system? In another way to say it, the question is asking whether or not the point one two is the point of intersection between those two linear lines. First, we have to label our equation. That's called equation one. Equation two. Remember, labeling of the equation is always at the end of the equations. Next, we have to verify whether or not the point one two is on equation one. So we're going to write, check with the equation one, left hand side of the equation one, which is on the left hand side of the equal sign, which is two x plus three y. And we know the x value is one, the y value is two. Substitute into the left hand side, you're gonna get eight. On the right hand side of the equation one, it's already a eight. Since left hand side equals the right hand side, so we know the point one two is on line one. Next, we have to check with equation number two. Once again, we said left hand side equals to five x minus two y. Substitute one into the x and two into the y. We are going to get a one. And the right hand side of the equation two is already a one. Since left hand side equals the right hand side, therefore one two is also on line two. Since the point one two is on both lines. Therefore, we can say one two is the solution, which is the point of intersection of those two lines of the system. In a real life situation, math can be used to solve a problem by translating an English phrase or sentence into an algebraic expression or an equation. Example two. Let's translate each phrase or sentence into algebraic expression or an equation. Part A: A person's age increased by eight. Let A represents the person's age, so we will say A plus eight. Part B: Ten times the cube of a certain number. Let N represents the number, so we will write ten times. The cube of a number which is represented by n. Part C, seven is increased by half of a number. So this time we say let x represents a number. So we say seven is increased by half of the number x. Part D, half the mass of the container. Decreased by fifteen, so we will write half of the mass, which is represented by m, decreased means minus by fifteen. Part E, when a certain number is subtracted from twenty-five, the result is fifty-two. So we know it's subtracted from twenty-five. So we say twenty-five minus a certain number. Which is represented by y, the result means equals fifty two. Part F, twice an unknown number is increased by forty four, the result is one hundred thirty two. So we will write twice means two times an unknown number, which is represented by w, is increased by. Forty four. The result is means equals one hundred thirty two. Example three. Now let's model a real life situation 
with linear system, but we do not need to solve the system for now. The Markham Swimming Association would like to rent a banquet hall for their annual awards dinner. They have received two different quotations. Samantha's catering corner charges $500 to rent the room plus $15 per each meal. Benjamin's Party Place charges $400 for the whole, plus $18 for each meal. The association wants to know when both places cost the same. First, we have to define our variable. One of the variable is total amount of cost that we have to pay. So we say let C represents the total cost in dollars. The next it really depends on how many meals we have to order. So we have to say that N represents the number of meals. Next, we have to generate our equation. The first one is at Samantha's catering corner. We know the total cost will be the $500 plus $15 per meal. So we do 15 times by M. The next equation will be at Benjamin's. The total cost will be $400 for the whole plus $18 per meal. And now we generate a linear system. Just a friendly reminder, whenever you write your last statements, make sure you have the noun and the units if applicable. Example 4. The difference between two numbers is 45. Three times the larger number less five times the smaller number equals 75. Find those two numbers. Once again, step one, we have to define our variables. Usually, you can find your variables on the last sentence of the question. So here, we know the variables are the two numbers. When we write the last statements to define our variables, we try to be as specific as possible. So our first last statement will be let L represents the larger number and the second will be let S represent the smaller number. Please know that usually we do not use S to represent a variable because S looks like a number 5. Step 2. Let's generate the equations. The first sentence of the question says the difference between two numbers is 45. So we have to use the larger number to subtract the smaller number. Is means equals 45. The second equation, the question says three times the larger number subtract five times the smaller number equals to 75. So now we have generated two equations to create a linear system. Example 5. Jack has $8,000 to invest and would like to earn $500 from the money. How much should he invest in a stock that has been getting a 10% annual return and how much should he invest in savings bond that pays 4% annual interest? Once again, step one, we have to define our variables. So one of the variable will be the amount of money that you put into the stock. So we say that K represents the amount of money invested in a stock in dollars. Remember the noun and the units. Second variable will be the amount of money that put into the savings bound. So we say let B represents the amount invested in savings bound in dollars. Next, we can generate the equation. First, we know Jack has $8,000 in total, which means the amount of money that you put into the stock plus the amount of money that you put into the savings bound will be $8,000. For the second equation, we're going to find how much money he earned from the interest. So we know the stock 
will give you ten percent of the return. So we say ten percent, which is zero point one, times by the amount of money that you put in the stock, plus four percent, which is zero point zero four, times by the amount of money that you put into the savings bond, is going to give you five hundred dollars in return. So those two are our equations for the linear system. Example six: Maria traveled ninety-five kilometers from Oakville to Oshawa by car and by go train. The car averaged sixty kilometers per hour, and the train averaged ninety kilometers per hour. The whole trip took one point five hours. How long was she in the car? Once again, let's read the last sentence to find our variables. So one of the variable is the amount of time she was in the car. So we say let's see represents the time traveled in the car in hours. The noun, which is the time in the car, the units, which is in hours. The second variable. Will be the amount of time that she spent in the go train. So we say that T represents the time traveled in the train in hours. Next, we have to generate our equation. We know the whole trip took one point five hours, which means the amount of time that she spent in the car plus the amount of time she spent in the go train is. One point five hours. The second equation will be based on total distance traveled. We know distance equals to speed times by the time. So the amount of distance that she traveled in the car will be the speed of the car, which is sixty kilometers per hour, times by the time that she spent in the car. Plus, the distance that she traveled by go train will be speed of the go train, which is ninety kilometers per hour, times by the time that she spent in the go train. The total distance will be ninety-five kilometers. Once again, we need to remember the distance equals to speed times by the time. So the distance traveled by the car plus the distance traveled by the go train is going to be the total distance traveled. So here is our linear system with two linear equations.